I am, I am very honored and very blessed to be able to give the, the, the closing keynote, the lock note, if you will. And I want to share with you some of the things that is uh, something that's near to my heart. It's a community that I am a member of uh, that has built a system that is both software and hardware. And some of it might seem overwhelming and some of it might seem silly, but I want you to think about what this means to you in your journey. Because your journey is maybe just starting, maybe you're a couple years into it, maybe you think that coding makes web pages, maybe you think coding makes art, maybe you think coding makes uh, manipulation of data easier, but I want you to understand how you can truly manipulate your reality and fundamentally change things for the better. We've seen drones flying over Puerto Rico, we've seen art being generated, we've seen all kinds of things that are affecting lives. This is just one, and I hope it is inspiring to you. We're gonna talk about solving diabetes with an open source artificial pancreas. Now, as uh, I was introduced, I do have a podcast. It's called Hansel Minutes, because I'm a really bad estimator. Uh, people ask me how long something's gonna take, I tell them it's gonna be about 10 minutes, and they go, is that Hansel Minutes? Uh, things take a while. My show is only 30 minutes long, though, and I would encourage you to check it out. It's friendly for the newbies, and I even had this person on, who in 2014 was talking about a bionic pancreas. But that hasn't yet shipped, but the thing that we're gonna talk about is open source and has shipped. Now, when you do a talk about health and healthcare and fitness and things like that, you're usually supposed to show a picture of yourself doing something fit. <laughs> but that's not me, because I can't do that. <laughs> most, of my, uh, most of my fitness is Netflix related. Uh, here's a picture of me uh, working in my IT job. <laughs> I've been writing about diabetes and all kinds of things on my blog for almost 20 years. Uh, you can check that out as well. But we're going to talk about the basics of type 1 diabetes. Now, I'm going to oversimplify it. So if there's anyone here who is a type 1 diabetic, you may say, well, that's not exactly how it works. But it's close enough because it's an analogy and you're going to be OK. So we're going to talk about this. Food raises your blood sugar. Okay? Food raises your blood sugar effectively, and it brings sugar into your bloodstream. Now, everything you eat turns to sugar. You eat sugar, turns to sugar. You eat meat, still turns to sugar. Everything turns into sugar, and it sits in this hallway of your bloodstream, and it sits in there ready for class. And when you get insulin, the insulin delivers that sugar to your cells. The cells are the classrooms. So when you have that insulin show up, the doors to the classroom open, and then the hallways exit and all of the sugar is delivered to the cells. Now, if you don't have any insulin, if you don't have enough insulin, if you don't use insulin well, if you have no way to unlock the classroom doors, then that sugar is going to build up. Those kids in the classroom are just going to sit there. And we, as diabetics, are going to end up marinating in our own sugar. Now, if you have any diabetic aunties or uncles or grandparents or friends, you can smell it on them. They literally are, when I say marinating, I'm not joking. You can smell the sugar on their breath because their body has nowhere to put it, so it exits through anywhere it can. I have been a type 1 diabetic for 25 years. I would die in about two weeks without insulin. So this is a chronic thing. Now, type 1 diabetes is not type 2 diabetes. I do want to give respect and a shout out to my type 2s. This is a type 1 conversation. They're such a different disease, they really deserve their own names. But long story short, type 2 has some metabolic uh, issues there. Um, people can often fix that with diet or exercise or pills. Type 1 is the complete absence of the insulin in the body. I have no working pancreas, so all of my insulin needs to be externalized. I have to get it from some source. I can't fix this with hot yoga. I need insulin. It is absolutely necessary. So food raises your blood sugar. Insulin lowers it. It delivers it to your cells. Now, if you take too much insulin, you remove everything, and then you empty out the school, and then you die from a lack of fuel. The analogy that I use is a airplane analogy. And much like airplanes, a high altitude will kill you slowly as you go up, 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 and then eventually float off into the stratosphere. And much like airplanes, a low altitude will kill you <laughs> quickly uh, if you hit zero at speed. What we have to do here is not be high and not be low. I try to keep my blood sugar at the same height. So if you think about that in the context of an airplane, I'm trying to have a nice, smooth altitude. So I'm going to fly from LA to New York, and I can look at my altitude. I can look at my altimeter by pricking my finger and looking at my blood sugar. And then I can adjust the height by either eating some food and going up, or injecting some insulin and going down. Here's the fun part, though. When I look at my altitude, when I check my blood sugar, it's not now. It's 10, 15 minutes ago. 
And when I take that insulin or eat that food, nothing really happens for 10, 15, maybe even 30 minutes. So now you get to fly from New York to LA. The altitude shows you the altitude it was in the past. When you push the stick, nothing happens for a half an hour. And you only get to look at the altimeter 10 times, and you only get to touch the stick 6 to 10 times. So have a great flight. <laughs> Those are some of the problems we have to think about when we are dealing with diabetes. And the worst part about it is that if you are better at math, you will live longer. How unfair is who makes a disease where the good math people live longer? <laughs> I mean, you talk about like a privilege, an inherent privilege, like, hey, we're going to give you a disease. Are you good at math? Enjoy that. <laughs> That's a real problem. So we want to make that not a problem anymore. Now, here's what my personal loop is like. I can check my blood sugar with a finger stick. I can count carbohydrates and do math. I can listen to react to my body. I'm having to deal with the heat right now, which is a huge challenge. I can look at a continuous glucose meter that we'll talk about in a minute, and then I have to do it all over again. And I do that every five or 10 minutes all the time. Here's yours. You basically eat whatever the heck you want because you're in New York, you go to sleep, and your blood sugar is amazing, and you wake up and you still eat. <laughs> and we talk about y'all. You're the normally sugared. When the diabetics get together in our private diabetic club with our low sugar snacks, it's very sad. Now, this is called the loop. I have to close my loop. I look at my blood sugar. Computer science people, code newbies, I look at my blood sugar. That's the read. Then I take insulin. That's the write. So I've got this read-write loop. But I have to close it. I have to do the math. I used to do the math on a paper. Now I do the math in my head. That's a complicated thing. I want to close that loop. I don't want an open loop. I want a closed loop system. I want a Tesla autopilot for diabetes. OK? Now, I can check my blood sugar. That is no fun. I can uh, prick myself with um, needles, and that kind of sucks. It just kind of generally sucks. Uh, here's the thing, also. We're just big meat bags full of juice. <laughs> and you got to get either juice in or juice out. And it usually involves puncturing the meat bag. And we're going to talk about why that's a challenge for diabetics. Now, every diabetic engineer ever, always, gets the disease, gets really sad about it, and then tries to solve it with Microsoft Excel. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, this really sucks. I'm going to make a graph. Uh, so I'm old, so I did it in Palm Pilot. <laughs> I remember when we got color. That was a day. And I would manage my blood sugar in the cloud, and I had charts and graphs, and I had a little modem that I could plug in, and I was living the dream. So I called up the blood sugar people, and I was like, hey, can I download the data from my, my blood sugar meter? Because it's my data, right? And they were like, no. Well, but give me your specification documents, and then your great API, and I can join your developer community. No, that's not a thing. It's proprietary. So we started breaking into it. I wrote blood sugar meter downloaders, and I would listen in on the wires to figure out what the, what the protocol, what the secret sauce is, so I could get the freaking file out that represents the data that I, in fact, made. My body made this. That's not cool. And I would go and put that in open source. I put this up in 2007. Now, I'm not saying I'm taking credit for any of this, because just like Edison and the other dude, the light bulb gets invented in multiple places. All the while, while I'm doing this, some people with PhDs and a better font are also, <laughs> doing, are also doing the same thing. But we didn't have social coding. We didn't have GitHub. We didn't have social network. All diabetics, every diabetic engineer ever always uses the language that they have to solve this problem. Now, I'm talking about diabetes, but I want to point out that this could be a sleep apnea machine. You could be hacking your pacemaker. There's all kinds of stuff. This is not, this is chronic disease, and I'm just using diabetes as an example. So, needles suck. Let's make a pump. Well, let's get some DIY, because I'm going to get a pump, and it's going to release me from having to carry around needles. I'm going to walk around New York with my pump on. It's going to be amazing. That is the first insulin pump. Yeah. Woo! Doesn't that look amazing? Don't you just feel like empowered by the pump? So people say that sucks, and they fix it. This is, I'm going to zoom in on this. This is an insulin pump carved out of wood. Look what's going on here. You see this screw? That screw turns, and it pulls a piece of metal here, and it pushes the syringe plunger in to then squirt out the insulin. DIY. 
When you do an insulin pump, it pushes in a little cannula. Cannula is the friendly name they give plastic needles. And it pushes the cannula into your body, and then the fat absorbs that insulin. So then you have a little kid here with an insulin pump and a tube on. And one of the things that I like to talk about is invisible disabilities, because my privilege is I don't have to tell you I'm diabetic, but I'm connected to that 24-7, 365 for the last 20 years. And when I sleep, I sleep with it, and I put it underneath my pillow. And when I roll over twice, I almost die, and then I roll over twice in the other direction. And that's fine. I've got more equipment in my pockets, all required, and without it, I'm deed. Now, finger sticks suck, but we gotta poke the meat bag. Someone's trying to figure out a way to do this. They call it non-invasive blood sugar monitoring. So, this thing came out. It's called the Gluco Watch. I'm like, ooh, Gluco Watch. I'm gonna get this. It's the hotness. I get it. I get the watch on. I'm like, show my, my blood sugar every 15 minutes. Takes an electrical signal, and it gives you tiny electric shocks across the interstitial fluid and the sweat on your arm, uh, and it's great because you know your blood sugar, but it's also not good because electrical burns. So then you call uh, for tech support, and you're, hey, love the watch, fantastic, the burns. <laughs> and they go, no worries, we got you. Uh, your wrist has two sides. <laughs> so you just need to rotate and let the electrical burns heal on the other side. Uh, they're not in business anymore. So what you do is you gotta poke the meat bag. So you jam a needle into the meat bag and you keep it there. And I've got one right here. It's called a CGM, it's a continuous glucose meter. It looks kind of gross because I got a piece of tape over it because it's 175 degrees outside and it will sweat off. So there's just a needle in there and it's telling me what my blood sugar is and it's sending it out over Bluetooth and it's going, hey, there's your blood sugar, there's your blood sugar. That's what Bluetooth sounds like. But it's Bluetooth, <laughs> it's Bluetooth low energy. So it's like, there's your blood sugar. And it's just kind of broadcasting it out into the world and letting you know. And this is what it looks like when it's on your body. And then if you are not a diabetic and you're in fact a supermodel who is doing like maybe some catalog work, it looks like this. <laughs> so if you don't have diabetes and you do a lot of sit-ups, it looks like that. If you do have diabetes, you basically have a bunch of bruises and holes that are healing from the previous time that you punctured the meat bag as you rotate these parts anywhere that you can find a place that hasn't uh, become a problem. So now I've got my data, but it's in like a proprietary format and they'd be keeping it in a, in a cloud that I can't access. I really wanna store my data somewhere. And the thing is yelling, here's your blood sugar, here's your blood sugar. So maybe we can do some off the shelf hardware and some open source hardware and listen in. We can listen in, we can snatch that out of the thin air and grab that blood sugar and then view it this is the tool here on the lower right corner that they give you when you uh, get this device, but wouldn't it be cool if you could grab it and put it into your own Android app, or put it in Mongo, or stick it in a no in node somewhere and make a whole website that would allow remote viewing of your blood sugar. Imagine you're a little kid, you've been diagnosed diabetic, all the other kids go to camp, but you can't go because your parents can't see your blood sugar, and they can't check on you, and you can't manage it yourself. So you could have remote viewing of blood sugar in real time. So the Night Scout Foundation is an open source software foundation with an app that you can work on if you want to, written in Node using D3JS and the things that we're learning at places like Codeland. And the hashtag is so awesome. We are not waiting. I have been diabetic for over 25 years and every single year they have told me that in the next five years they're gonna cure this. So we got tired of waiting. So we're doing it ourselves. If there's a thing that's been bugging you, don't wait. Did any of the people that we saw today at Codeland wait? They did it themselves. So the community that I am blessed to be a part of has chosen to do that themselves. I can see my blood sugar in real time on a chart. Here's the best part. I've got a REST API that returns JSON for my own blood sugar. I can write a curl statement at the command line and get my blood sugar. So what's the obvious next thing? Well, you put it in your Git prompt because then you've got your branch, and then your modified files, and then your blood sugar with a trend line. I mean, wouldn't everyone want to do that? I've got little Android devices and picture frames around my house where you can look up on the wall and see what my blood sugar is. So my, my wife knows what my blood sugar is even though I'm 3,000 miles away. And she texts me to let me know that all the time. Hey, your blood sugar is trending down. Are you okay? And I let her know that I'm okay. And I can even ask Siri, what's my blood sugar? and then Siri will go and call that REST API and return JSON and I can figure out how I'm doing. 
once you own your data, once you control your data, once you get it out of the proprietary format and into something open, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can put it on a watch, a real Gluco watch with open source parts. That happens to be a Pebble. I've got mine on an Apple watch. So if I can read my blood sugar, then could I potentially dose insulin automatically? By the way, I've lost my timer and forgotten entirely how much time I have left, so just holler five minutes. I need to hurry. So what's my blood sugar, the read? Could I write? Could I, could I poke at the insulin pump? Well, it's a closed ecosystem. There's no open standards, and there's not really any pumps that let you do this. But some intrepid people used a thing called software-defined radio. Go and check this out, SDR radio. For 19 bucks, you can get a USB dongle that plugs into your computer, and you can listen to the radio, like listen to literally, literally like the FM radio. So I can listen to like 91.5, and I can go all the way to the right, and I can listen to 107.5, and I can keep going past the radio knob all the way up to 900 megahertz because that just happens to be the radio station of the insulin pump. So then we can go and listen to that and maybe make something. So what could we do? Well, I've got a system here. Let's go ahead and switch over to the uh, camera for me. So the godmother of the open artificial pancreas uh, was a woman named Dana Lewis. And Dana Lewis says, with her husband Scott, they said, you know, this is the thing that they gave me when I became diabetic, and that's like a little iPod thing, and I can plug it in with USB, and I can plug it into maybe a Raspberry Pi. I can write a for loop that says, what's my blood sugar, what's my blood sugar, what's my blood sugar, every five minutes, and then I could go and get the dongle that the doctor uses to talk to the pump, and then I could get like a battery, and I could put it all together into like a big thing, and then wear it in a fanny pack, because fanny packs are coming back into style. <laughs> and all of that, go ahead and switch back, all of that together, was Dana's first artificial pancreas that she put and she carried for us in her pocket. So she started looping with the open artificial pancreas system. And then other people got involved. She tweeted, hey, this is an artificial pancreas. And someone else said, well, maybe we can make it smaller. We can put it on a phone, and the phone can do the work. And then they would come back, and they said, well, maybe we can put it in a Raspberry Pi Zero and put a little graphical hat on it and stuff, and that could be a pancreas. We have our choice of artificial pancreas now. We have coopetition. There are three different open source projects doing artificial pancreases now, and this has just happened in the last three to five years. They're getting smaller and smaller. I have one that I have been using for three years in my pocket that is a bridge between Bluetooth and the 900 megahertz frequency that my pump uses. They took the electromagnetic frequencies at 900 megahertz, they plucked it out of the thin air and wrote Python, and they can read information from this blood sugar meter and this pump, except the pump people don't like that. They don't like that at all, because we are not waiting. Some folks wrote an application in Swift that's open source called Loop. Now I can dose my blood sugar and uh, dose my, uh, my pump and check my blood sugar on my Apple Watch. I've been doing this for three years. I'm looper number six, I think. We have now 7,000 people who are looping in this world. I can even dose with emoji. Glycemic index, right? Because sugar hits you fast and pizza hits you slow. We all learned that. So I can go and say emojis plus tacos plus pizza. And if you're a math person, they've gone and documented all of the algorithms and how they make these decisions and how they do integral retrospective correction. And what's the goal? What's the goal? All this software, all this open source hardware, why? To die of old age. <laughs> Diabetes kills people. Number one cause of blindness, number one cause of liver failure, kidney failure, amputation. Diabetics, I, will die of diabetes. Or I will outlive it and then die of old age. Or I could get hit by like an ice cream truck on like, you know, 25th Street and just like be like on the ground, like insulin over here in an ice cream bar. It'd be like really ironic and cool. <laughs> That's my blood sugar. This is non-diabetic numbers. Now, to be clear, I have a lot of equipment and wires, and I poke the meat bag a lot, but for three years, I have kept my blood sugar at non-diabetic levels. Now, there's inherent privilege in all of this, so we need to make all of this kind of technology available to people. We have parties where we get together and help people build their own pancreases. We help them source the materials. We teach them how to SSH into their pancreas, because sometimes you just gotta run HTOP on your pancreas to see how, <laughs> to th see how things are doing. So the way forward is our data anywhere, I've written about this on my blog, and some people have gotten together and talked about it and built 
a nonprofit called Tidepool, which is making open source software and working with the FDA to allow universal uploading of data from all of your different devices. And they're going to take the Loop application. They've hired the open source programmers who work on Loop full time. They got a grant from the Helmsley Foundation, and they are going to put that in the App Store, because right now it's sideloaded. The Night Scout Foundation is also a nonprofit, and that application is up on GitHub. And OpenAPS, the original open source artificial pancreas written in Go and Node and Python, runs on Linux, is all up on OpenAPS. It changes lives. Now, when I went up to Xbox, I wanted to get like an Xbox guy that had like a cool insulin pump, but I didn't have any choice for that. Uh, representation matters, but I did get a Terminator arm. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to disrespect people who actually have a Terminator arm. So I hired some folks to make me a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. So now you can go and buy a diabetes avatar uh, accessory, and kids can as well, because my Xbox gamer tag is glucose. Um, and all the money goes to these nonprofits. The hashtag is we are not waiting and open APS. And I just want you to understand how powerful you are that you will do stuff like this. You will fly drones, you will solve software, you will create art, you will cure diseases. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you very much.